Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Daily Prayer. My name is Nate, and I'm so glad that you're joining us today, wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this. Um, it's just good to get together, to get into God's Word, and to pray. Um, today, I'm going to uh, just kind of be reflecting on one of my favorite devotionals. Um, it's a devotional I get through, through email. Uh, it's called Pray the Bible, and it's uh, based off of a book written by Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry was a um, Bible commentarian and pastor uh, centuries ago, and he wrote this book called A Method for Prayer that basically took scripture and organized it topically so that you could then pray it um, to God. And so every day they send out, uh, his organization sends out one of these, and and it has um, some topics and scripture that you can pray uh, over your life. Uh, sometimes it's just recognizing who God is. Sometimes it's asking him for things. But it's a really great way to connect uh, our, our Bible time with our prayer time. So what I want to do is I want to read this to you. Uh, I have some just some reflections on it, on the scriptures that are read, and then we're going to pray it together. So this week's is... or. Today's is recognize God's perfect knowledge and unsearchable wisdom. Um, it's part of their adoration section. We need to recognize that he, God, has a perfect knowledge of all persons and things and sees them all, even that which is most secret, at one clear, certain, and unerring view. All things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom I must give account, even the thoughts and intentions of the heart. <clears throat> That's from Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. <clears throat> Your eyes are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good, Proverbs 15, 3. They run to and fro throughout the whole earth, that you may give strong support to those whose hearts are blameless towards you. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. You test the heart and you search the heart and test the mind, that you may give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Jeremiah 17, 10. O God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Darkness is as light with you. And that's all from Psalm 139. Then we need to recognize that his wisdom, God's wisdom is unsearchable and the counsels and designs of it cannot be fathomed. Your understanding, O Lord, is infinite for you determine the number of the stars and you give to all of them their names. Psalm 147, four and five. You are wonderful and excellent you are wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom, Isaiah 28, 29. Wise in heart and mighty in strength, Job 9, 4. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all, Psalm 104, 24, according to the counsel of your will, Ephesians 1, 11. O the depth of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. So I just have some thoughts on, on some of these verses, and so we'll go back to the top. All things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom I must give account, even the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And when I first thought of that, I thought of x-ray vision um, from, the, uh, from comic books or whatever, uh, to be able to see through walls and to be able to see into hearts. That's what God can do. Um, one of the phrases that jumped out of me in this verse is, I must give account. Um, so he's searching because I have to give an account to him. And, and so even though we are recognizing uh, God's um, perfect knowledge and how he knows everything, we're also in this passage recognizing our responsibility that we one day will have to stand before him and give an account for everything that we've done. Um, the, the next verse is Proverbs 15, 3, which says, your eyes are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. And I was thinking about this. God not only sees the good in the world, God sees the evil. And I think sometimes in our prayers, I know for me, uh, it can be easy to say, God, do, don't you see what's happening? Don't you see the mess that we're in? 
um, almost as if he, he doesn't notice it, but God does. He sees every evil thing that happens and it grieves him. I think that's important for us to remember um, as we're praying that, that he sees both the evil and the good. The next verse, talking about his eyes, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth that you may give strong support to those whose hearts are blameless towards you. Second Chronicles 16, 9. So not only is, is God searching because we have to give an account to him, but he's searching to give us support. He's looking to support those of us who, are, who have been made blameless through Christ Jesus. And that's exciting. I think sometimes when we think about God, um, God, God's eyes and his perfect knowledge, it can co- sort of turn to like big brother, uh, you know, where he's always watching. So be careful what you do. Or, you know, like Santa Claus, like he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. But God is looking so he can support us. And that should be exciting. That should make us rejoice that God is always watching because he's watching with intent. Um, The next verse, you search the heart and test the mind that you may give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Uh, Test the mind. This is something that's that's been talked about recently in politics with like these cognitive tests that the presidential candidates have been taking or not taking and and their answers to them. Um, But God tests our mind and I don't think he tests it in a cognitive way. I think he, he tests it Again, in order to measure our ability, in order to know what he can give us. Think back to like the parable of the talents. Uh, God, God gives what we are capable of. And, and part of the way that he determines that, this verse is saying, is that he searches our hearts and tests our minds. Um, and then we just have these beautiful verses from, from Psalm 139. A lot of, a lot of us know these um, O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down, when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down are acquainted with all my ways. Even before words on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. Um, and then this verse, Psalm 139, 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. And I think this is important I don't think, I know this is important because when we think about God, we need to recognize that there are things that we're never going to understand. We're never going to truly grasp. And so we can recognize his perfect knowledge, but we can never attain his perfect knowledge. We will never truly understand it. Um, And that's something important for us to keep in mind. The next section is all about God's wisdom. And the first verse is um, from Psalm 147 four through five, uh, your understanding, O Lord, is infinite. We'll stop right there. God not only sees, but he understands. God not only sees, but he understands. Uh, and I think that's important. So for me, for me the, one of the biggest things in my life is being understood. I want to be understood. Um, and to know that God understands me, God not just knows me, but he understands me, because there's a difference. There's, there's, there's a difference when you know a fact, and there's a difference when you understand a fact, right? I can know um, that uh, a, a science fact that, that tells me like the rate of speed or something like that, but it's different when I understand that and know how to put it into practice. So I know that when I put my foot on the gas pedal on my car, it's going to go this fast, right? You get you understand that? So God not only sees, God not only knows, he understands us. I think earlier it said, um, uh, one of the verses that it had in Hebrews, Hebrews 4, even the thoughts and the intentions of the heart, he understands even our intentions. Um, Psalm 147 goes on, your understanding is infinite, for you determine the number of stars and give to all of them their names. Do you know that there are still stars in the universe that we have not seen yet? There are still planets that are being discovered. There are still these heavenly bodies that we are finding new and new every day. Um, And God has names for, for these things that we don't even know. That's how infinite his knowledge and his wisdom is. 
that he names things that we, that we have no clue and we may never know of. Um, the Isaiah and Job passage, you are wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom, wise in heart and mighty in strength. Uh, that just reminded me of, of the part of the song, Good, Good Father, where it says, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Um, God is so good and so perfect and, and it's, he is wonderful and excellent and wise and mighty. Um, and that just reflected me of, of the names that are given to God. Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Everlasting God. Um, his counsel is wonderful. That's exciting because that means when he speaks to us, uh, it's, it can be a delight. It can be a joy for us. Uh, Psalm 104, 24, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. Now, I didn't know off the top of my head the definition of manifold, so I had to go look it up. Manifold means many and various. Many and various. Um, and in wisdom you have made them all. That means that everything is done with purpose and everything is done with understanding and everything is done with wisdom and everything God does just back to this idea of perfection, holiness, everything God does is perfect. Nothing is beyond him. But I think this is important to still understand and realize God is sometimes beyond us. I think when we try to understand God, there are points where he is just beyond our understanding. Um, and that's what this last passage kind of reflects on. Oh, the depth of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. And I think that's a, a, I think that's a true statement, but it's also a caution for us. Sometimes we have to take things on faith. Sometimes there isn't an understanding, there isn't a definition, there isn't a, uh, an easy way to make sense of what God is doing or why he is the way he is. And so sometimes we just have to say, like this passage, God, you're, you're unsearchable, you're inscrutable, and I don't have to understand, but I know that you understand. I'm going to read this one more time. I'll read it as a prayer. Um, and I hope that you'll join me as we pray. God, we thank you and praise you. We adore your perfect knowledge of all perfect and thing, persons and things. We adore the sight that you have over all things. We adore that you are clear and certain and unerring. And so, Lord, we pray these scriptures. All things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom I must give account, even the thoughts and intentions of my heart. And Lord, your eyes are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. They run to and fro throughout the whole earth, that you may give support to those whose hearts are blameless towards you, God, I ask that our hearts are blameless towards you and that you may be seeking us to give us support. God, I thank you that you search the mind, or you search the heart and you test the mind, that you may give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Lord, we pray that we would be people who you can trust. We pray that we would be people that you can give much to because we are good stewards. Oh God, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit up, you know when I lie down. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, oh Lord, you know it. You knew everything I was going to say today and you know everything I'm going to say tomorrow. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. God, I thank you that you are above and beyond us. I praise you for that. Darkness is as light with you and we praise you that you can see and sift everything. God, I thank you and praise you for your wisdom, your unsearchable wisdom, your counsels and designs that cannot be fathomed. And so we pray these scriptures. Your, under, your understanding, O oh Lord, is infinite. For you determined the number of the stars and you gave to all of them their names. God, we thank you that you are in the business of naming things. Lord, we thank you that you not only name things, but you know names. Thank you that you are a personal God, even to the stars, even to the billions and billions of these heavenly bodies that we're still discovering every day. You are personable to them. How much more personable are you to us? We thank you and praise you for that. You are wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom, wise in heart and mighty in strength. God, you are so perfect. Thank you for your counsel, for your wisdom, for your strength, for your heart. O oh Lord, how manifold, how many and various are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. You do nothing by chance. You do everything according to the counsel of your own will. O oh, the depths of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable are his ways. Lord, I pray that we would recognize when things are too high for us. Recognize that they are above and beyond. I pray that we would marvel at that, that it wouldn't be a, a confounding thing or a confusing thing, but that would be something about your character that we are able to rejoice in, that you are above and beyond us and you are great and you are mighty. And it's in your name that we ask these things. Amen.